In this episode, we look into how to catch and clean cuttlefish. A member of the cephalopod family, these crazy looking creatures move into Moreton Bay during the cooler months of around April through to September. Unlike tiger squid, cuttlefish are more commonly found in deeper water from around 5 to 15 metres, with popular spots being from Cleveland Point northwards, up past Wellington Point, Green, St Helena and Mud Islands. Cuttlefish love to sit on or close to a flat bottom consisting of a sand mud mix, and also like isolated pieces of soft corals situated throughout the area. Feeding on a variety of crustaceans and small fish, cuttlefish are caught using heavily weighted prawn-like squid jigs that are worked close to the bottom. Okay guys, so I'm going to use two different styles of rigs. So one's a Paternoster rig, as you can see there, long dropper loops tied on it, sinker on the bottom, and two different varieties of squid jigs. So we got a small, very lightly weighted squid jig on the bottom, that's a little short catch one. And up a little bit higher, more of a dark, natural looking grey look to that one. So that's a Yamashita. I'm going to cast that out. And the joys of running a Paternoster rig is basically being able to put it out and just leaving it. It can do its own thing. And that can sit in the rod holder while you fish another one. So you can take advantage of running, particularly by yourself, take advantage of it and possibly hooking multiple. Particularly if you come across an area that's got many of them, you'll hook one and you'll then hook the other one. So then it gives you a good idea where they're located. Mark them on your GPS and come back. Another way of doing it, it's running a squid jig with a ball sinker in front of it. We're fishing anywhere from that sort of 5 to 15 metres of water for these cuttlefish. And that one there can sit, it just drags along the bottom, keeps very close to where those cuttlefish are. I think we got one on. Put it in the bottom. You will see when it does load up a little bit, but you need to pay attention to that. Because what will happen is the cuttlefish will grab it and they won't be hooked. So if you see it load up a little bit, just grab the rod. Try to sink those barbs into that cuttlefish. So we can drop this one to the bottom now and work it and mimic a prawn. So we just want to flick it every now and then. We don't want to pull it far up through the water column though. We want to keep it quite low down towards where the, the cuttlefish are in the bottom. Oh, straight away we got one. They certainly don't put up much of a fight considering your squid you often catch, they propel and carry on. He's a nice one, that one. The important part with these guys is getting them close to the bottom. They do sit close to the bottom, if not in the bottom. So you can see they're very well camouflaged. They can change colours according to the, uh, the type of ground that they're sitting on. Very cool. First one, there might be one on that other one there at the moment. So I've got a Paternoster rig on that one. Important parts, take a bit of slack line when you've got a set line like that, and then strike like that, just to set those barbs into the cuttlefish. Go. He's full of water, that one. These things have some serious ink in them compared to a squid. I reckon there's probably about three times more ink in these guys compared to a, a tiger squid. So you gotta be super careful. You can see these little jet propulsion unit you can swing that up and down make one hell of a mess you might have seen that video i put up a couple of months ago there i was offshore and i caught one of the big giant cuttlefish and it was huge it was 20 odd kg and i couldn't get the hook out of it over the side of the boat quite high sides on my big boat so i pulled it into the boat to get the hook out and then, holy smokes i reckon it dumped two or three liters of ink throughout my boat it was unbelievable luckily it cleaned up but yeah it was a huge mess I tried to always keep them faced away that was rather close otherwise they will ink you so you rolled in the net then they could have ended in tears you see you did squirt some ink I did get a little bit on me, and it's probably a little bit on the lens. Oh yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> I thought we got away with that, but I did not. It's absolutely caked. Be careful. There's actually one following it right there. Let's see if I can pull this other squid jig up right beside it.
See if we can hook two here. We'll look, we've got another one on that one as well. So we've just hit a big patch of them. I'm going to mark it on the GPS now. I can see them actually following this one up then. That one's pulled off. big patch of them there then there's one following this one up another one took that squid jig there unfortunately that one's come off I have marked it I will go back to the exact spot see he aimed back behind himself then actually squirted right back down through the back of the motor and boat but, um, yeah that little little gun they got on them is bloody unreal it can go anywhere important if you have lots of wind to make sure that your squid jigs are very close to the bottom you don't want to get a big angle on your line that squid jig being mid to high in the water column it's not often where you'll find those cuttlefish so to compensate just add a little bit extra weight to your squid jig just to make sure that it's very close and that sort of bottom half a meter if not lower to the bottom all depends on your water clarity often during the winter months the water is a lot clearer and they will see the squid jigs no problems at all quite good eyesight oh we got an arrow squid there we go beautiful obviously when you're targeting your cuttlefish you're going to catch other kinds and you'll often catch your pencil squid and arrow squid out with the cuttlefish out in the deeper water so you don't generally get a lot of your um your tiger squid obviously up in the weed banks etc you catch them a little bit shallow water but you will catch these guys with your cuttlefish at times not bad bycatch and that there is an absolute prime bait they're actually pretty good eating too a lot of people do say these taste better than the the tiger squid they're not as tough so but he's a prime bait that I'll turn into a good fish at some stage. So a good alternative, instead of putting weights on the front of your squid jigs, is to go to a really heavy squid jig. Now, a lot of the squid jigs on the market aren't heavy enough to do this type of fishing, hence why we do put the ball sinker on the front. But these Duo D squid squid jigs, they're quite heavy. They're, they're nose heavy as well, so they go down really well. You'll notice there's no whiskers or anything on them compared to normal squid jigs, so they're very streamlined. So they go to the bottom fast, extremely sharp hooks on them and they work really well so i uh, do recommend them and i think i showed that in my uh trolling video for squid as well these work really well for that too but, um yeah definitely a great alternative guys instead of putting sinkers on the front of them i think just shoots down so quick it's got to be the smallest cuttlefish i think i've ever caught squid jig's actually bigger than it he's cute it's on that duo d squid I've got one on this other one as well that looks for it so hitting a patch of him he's cute look at that absolute monster it's your lucky day buddy Off you go. On this one, so there we go. We got two on. It's the benefit to running a Paternoster rig. This could get ugly. Let's see if we can scoop both up without making a mess. Beautiful. How effective. Paternoster rigs can be, you know, you, you catch a one manually jigging it up and down, and then you've got your one sitting down at the rod holder, and you've got the possibility of not just catching one but two at the same time. Look at that green and that 
Absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully you can see that on camera. It's actually the same color as the eye on that squid jig. Absolutely beautiful. I was keen to try to get some underwater footage of cuttlefish taking the squid jig, so I put on a Paternoster rig with an inline camera on it. The results were pretty cool. As the squid jig drifts along, you will see a couple of cuttlefish that were sitting on the bottom take interest and begin to follow the jig. Eventually the bigger cuttlefish makes his move and quickly shoots in to grab the jig. It tightly hangs onto the jig before feeling some resistance as I begin to pull it up and quickly lets it go. This next one wasn't so lucky and after grabbing and hanging onto the jig for a considerable length of time, I struck the jig hard and managed to sink the barbs into one of its tentacles. Here we have another one that comes in changing colours as it extends its two main tentacles to grab the squid jig and bring it into its eight arms. This one quickly senses danger and even though it's hanging onto the barbs of the jig, it can simply open its tentacles and let go. Cuttlefish are masters of letting go of the squid jigs and after trying various hooking techniques and different styles of squid jigs, you soon learn this is part of fishing for cuttlefish. So it's calmed right down, it's starting to glass out now, the wind's dropped right out, which has its real disadvantages unfortunately because instead of pushing along, covering a fair distance, hopefully coming across where those cuttlefish might be, we're, we're barely moving, we're sitting dead still. Because of the small tides, we're just about an hour into the, the turn of the tide, but in these areas there's not a lot of tidal flow, so we're not covering much ground. And you're going to catch a lot less because you know these cuttlefish are spread out over a fair distance they do move around so when that starts to happen we need to start casting a fair way away around the boat but unfortunately we'll get snagged up a little more often so it's important when you do that that we cast let it sink for a bit and we need to do hops up off the bottom that'll avoid the squid you getting caught well, you actually lessen the chance you still might get it every now and then so we wait for it to hit the bottom and we lift, let it sink back down. And that's just basically that squidgy hitting the bottom and then lifting back up off the bottom, hopefully to avoid any snags. There's not a lot in these areas, but you still will get little bits of weed, the odd little bit of soft coral that will get caught up on your squid jig. So it's important to do that, otherwise you may lose it. If you're using light line like I am, so I'm only using six pound line, nine pound leader. You don't need anything special to chase these fish, or cuttlefish. Straight away, just changed my method and it's been rewarded straight away with a cuttlefish. So I was getting absolutely nothing then. Working close by the boat, just not moving. I looked at my GPS and realised we really are not going anywhere. That's a good one. It's not a bad one, that one. It's actually a really dark coloured one. So I dare say he would have been around a little weed patch. They're very good at changing colours to anything that they're sitting around suit their environment. Look at that. Really dark coloured. He's starting to change instantly. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but automatically he's gone from being a super dark, almost black colour to changing. Oh, look at that. As soon as I touched it, the colours. Look at that. If I take that away, he'll probably go back to a different colour again. It's just phenomenal what they can do and so instant. Now it's said that they can do that because they have three brains. Being part of the cephalopod family, so meaning that its arms or legs, tentacles, are joined to the head, not to the body. So that includes your squid, octopus, cuttlefish. They all have three hearts. These guys have three brains, squid have three brains. 
whereas the octopus have nine brains. So very smart little animals for that reason. And unlike humans, their blood's not red, it's actually a greeny blue colour. But look at that beautiful change of colour. I don't know if you can see that up real close or not, but especially in that sun. Such a cool creature of Morton Bay. As you can see, he's taken on that duo D squid. That's really starting to rack up the cuttlefish at the moment. I might try a couple of different colours, but uh, I think that orange and bright green, they can see from quite a way away. Come in to investigate and grab it. That is cool. Beautiful looking cuttlefish. Nice and clean. See the mess I've tipped out. Hopefully they'll expelled all the rink. I'll put them in the esky now. Look at the colours on some of those. Absolutely beautiful. Have a look at that little arrow squid changing colours. I love that. That's so cool. Unbelievable. Very cool thing that the squid do. Fish when you get them home, you gotta eat them, you see them doing that. It's phenomenal. Anyway, I see's down. Head up through the bay island, see if we can get some more. So, got 19 cuttlefish in there and one squid. So we're allowed 50, obviously. That's due to being so plentiful through the bay. The bag limits are quite high on them. I'm not always one for just going and get your bag limits. But when you're eating and using them for bait and they're so plentiful in the winter months, I'll happily get a decent amount of them, so um, I'm not aiming for 50 or anything like that, but 30 or 40 would be really nice. If I can get onto a big patch of bigger ones, that'd be even better. But uh, we'll go up through the Bay Islands now and see what we can find. New area in the middle of the bay. Only a little fella. Hanging on. Tiny, he'd probably make a good bait. I think I'll let him go. It's his lucky day. Don't ink me, buddy. I'll let you go. Look at that colour change. <laughs> so I'm out from Mud Island now. Moved up through the bay. It's actually wind swung around to the east, east northeast. Give it a go in some deeper water. So we're in about 13 metres of water, 14 metres of water. Try various steps, trying to be closer to the islands. Out a bit wider out here in the bay, in the middle of the bay at the moment. As you can see, they're in lots of different areas. Got one, just a little fella. We're out in deep water now. I've come out a little bit deeper. Trial on a few different things in an area I've never had a go up before. There we go, it's paid off. I'm out in 18 metres of water out from Mud Island. We'll come out and try something different. I've never fished that deep from before. Luckily, that was facing the other way. Just shows you just the variety of areas that you can go to and catch these guys. They're all over the place. You really aren't looking for anything as such. There's no features that you look for on the bottom. I'm actually just looking for featureless looking bottom. These guys love to just sit on mud and sand areas waiting for a food source to come past and grab. There we go. Poor old squid jig was an orange one. It's looking black now. Look at that, the colours on that. Very cool little specimen. Everywhere I've been going, I've just been trying different areas, new spots. 
picked up quite a few this morning. It gives me a great opportunity to go in different areas and try different things, different depths. That's how you learn, that's how you work things out. So that's what I've done today. I've just picked away and you know I'm getting one, two here and there. I get to learn a lot from that for future trips. And I'm not just flogging one area then. After eating and using all the cuttlefish for bait, it was time for another trip, so I took my mate Brett along. With plenty of inkings and laughs along the way, I was keen to try to get some more underwater footage of them eating the jigs with the inline camera on. I wasn't disappointed. Bad one. That one too, mate. Nice dark coloured one, aren't right. <laughs> that's gold. Like that? That's a uh, different variety of cuttlefish. That yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the old five finger one. Yeah, it's a five finger cephalopod. That one. <laughs> Good catch, mate. Not everyone can catch starfish. Mate, anyone can catch a Oh! <laughs> that was close, mate. Very close. Shot straight past your face. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? Oh. Copping and inking. As long as it's not you that gets the inking. Right, so we're going to throw a pattern oster rig down with one little squid jig on it and an inline camera. Just to see if we can capture the cuttlefish come in and take those squid jigs in front of the camera. Should be quite interesting if it's clear enough. Freddy's onto one right behind me. You're right, mate. Beautiful. Alright, so I just had a cuttlefish grab the squid jig then. I'm not trying not to lift it and hook it too hard, I just otherwise the camera moves around too much. So I just want them coming in and grabbing the squid jig and seeing what they do and how they react. Hopefully it should be pretty cool if it's clear enough down there. Another one's grabbed it then. Just let it go. I feel that resistance there, right? You'll notice the cuttlefish are absolute masters of letting the squid jig go. They generally grab it pretty much in the middle of the squid jig or the head. By the time you strike, it just slips the squid jig around and they pull off. Or they'll just hang on to it even when you think you've you've actually struck them to sink those barbs. That actually hasn't done anything. They're, they're still holding on to the middle of it. And when you get about two meters up off the bottom, they simply just open the tentacles and let it go. Even quite a few we're catching at the moment. We get them in the net, and you can actually see they're not even hooked. And they just let go of it while they're in the net. Brett's onto another one there. It's pretty in the sunlight. Isn't yeah. it? I reckon I'm going to wear this. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Keep going, buddy. You've still got a bit more left in you. A little ejaculation. So just using a little Duo D squid, squid jig there. What I've done is actually added some barbs to the top of it. So I've cut the bottom of the barbs so it sits flat along the top. And uh, hopefully that will increase the hookup rate because these cuttlefish are extremely hard to hook. They grab it midway through the body or from the head. So any little benefit to it, I can only see that as a bit of a positive. So being the fact they hit the bottom like that, you're gonna have less chance of getting hooked up being on the top of them like that as well. Oh, he's a nice one. Oh, 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 oh. it's a beautiful cut of that one. Very nice. Let's have a look at this specimen out of the look at the greens and he's actually not hooked either I don't think. He's gonna oh. <laughs> whoa 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 that's um playing with fire doing that yeah buddy just uh bring your squid jig back here for a moment please Brett this is what we've got Brett using at the moment so it's a bluish colored one you'll see that's also got the prongs 
on the very top of the squid jig. They're just a cheap style squid jig, but you think that would help keep the uh, tentacles hooked up, but unfortunately we're still losing many. So you can see where it's been grabbing and biting through the mesh on the squid jig there. But the problem is, is they just grab onto it and you, you can even sink what, you, what you're thinking is hooking and sinking those barbs, but it's actually not doing anything. They're just hanging onto it. Once, once they start coming up, they just simply let go and you haven't hooked them. Very tricky little buggers to keep on the squid jig. Oh, got one on. Stay on there. <laughs> Stay on there, buddy. You on too, eh? It's an arrow too, I oh, know. Yeah, it's an arrow. Oh, nice. That's why he's still on there. Yeah. Oh, oi! Oh, <laughs> My arms aren't long enough. Where'd that end up? Oh, jeez. Oh! <laughs> that wasn't the one. That's a bloody one from earlier. <laughs> look at him. I'm free. He can't go back down. Look. Back He's got to come back. <laughs> He's got a bit of air in him. He can't go down. Yep. We'll go back over and get him. Fortunately, he's stuck on the surface. He's got a bit of air inside him. Come over and scoop him up. Oh, the arrow got out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That arrow, mate, he was like, you beauty, I'm out of here. here we go. Took off a hundred mile an hour, that's gold. Oh, yeah. oh, one straight on it here. Got him. Nice. It's a bit hard to... Try net these ones on the yeah, Paternoster. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. It's all right, lucky I wore a white shirt. Eh? I was just about to show the camera, <laughs> and unfortunately, any time you want to show the camera, that's what happens. It's just not worth it. Sorry, mate. You're right. I've, uh, I got you good. So just off Green Island at the moment, we've moved out a fair way away from the reef at the moment, out in that sort of seven, eight metres of water. Just drifting along, incoming tide, down through the bay, down along past Green, and we're hooking them all the way through. It's the same if you go, you go up past St. Helena, mud. It's exactly the same thing. Oh, I had one on. This one's got the camera on it, so hopefully capturing some cool footage of those cuttlefish coming along and grabbing those squid jigs. Hello. It's a bit bigger that one, mate. Arrow. Oh, cuddly. Oh, he's a better one. He's only just on it. Yep, on the top. Oh, I don't like the way he's facing. Oh, it's getting too heavy. I can't lift it. Oh. I see it's nice and easy. We're 
hold and net them with this wire net right in the corner so it keeps them hopefully face down. There you go, Greg. You've got him in the top hooks. And this one's hooked in the top of those hooks. So it does come in handy at time to time. And we can net them and just leave it sit over the side like this. Continues to drain some of that ink, doesn't make a mess in your boat. Once I've collected a few, I then put them in a bucket. They flush a bit more. I then clean them in a scaler bag, get the rest of the ink out of them once they're dead, put them in the esky. Okay, before I start showing you how to clean the cuttlefish ready to eat, I just want to show you what you have to do to them before you use them for bait. Obviously, you want to put a big set of hooks, a ganged hooks or a set of snelled hooks through that. That big hard cuttle bone is going to get in the way. So we need to remove that. Best way to do it is with a set of shears. So these Sterling Black Panther shears are absolutely awesome for this. You can get them from most tackle shops. They're also brilliant for um, bleeding your fish. So you can cut the gills with them and bleed the fish that way. But yeah, they're absolutely awesome for that. But best way to do it is through the top of the mantle. We want to cut a little bit of the top section out of that cuttle bone. Simply grab it like that, chop, and it just pull straight out. Very simple process. That still keeps that cuttlefish intact, ready to use for bait. It's not messy. Give that to your budgie and you're good to go. Now I'll show you what to do to clean a cuttlefish so you can eat them. All right guys, to start cleaning our cuttlefish so we can eat it, we need to remove the skin and basically the top section of the cuttlefish. So you can't eat the top section. It's really only underneath the mantle or the hood that you can eat this fleshy bit here. So I'll show you how to do that without making a huge mess. Get our shears or scissors. Once again, it's gonna remove the bone quickly. We're gonna start peeling the skin away from the top back towards the end of the cuttlefish. You'll get your fingers back up underneath where the, the hood of it is. And you can start peeling it away. Quite easy. Just be gentle. I won't be too harsh on it here because the ink sac's hidden right there. We don't wanna pop that. So, let's see you can peel it in pretty much one go. We have a nice clean cuttlefish mantle or hood ready to eat. Now, what we need to do is actually remove the guts out of it. We don't want to pop that ink sac. That ink sac's actually located just there, and it's actually attached to the bottom side of the mantle. And we want—I'll show you how to remove that without making a huge mess. What we're going to do is get our shears. We're just going to cut along that sort of seam or line you can see where the cuttle bone was sitting. We don't mind coming just a, a little bit away from it because that can be tough on that seam. So we're going to go down both sides. All right, and we're going to roll this back over this one. And there's that big nasty ink sack right here. You pop that, it's going to be a huge mess. So just pull it a little bit if you pull it. Sometimes you go to pull it and remove it completely, it'll come off okay. Other times it'll actually bust and you'll end up with ink everywhere. That end section of the hood is actually a little bit tough, so I don't mind just cutting around that to avoid making a mess. And we're not going to eat that tough part of the cuttlefish. So just remove the rest of the guts and bits and pieces out of it. Now you will end up with a slight membrane that's on the inside. The more of that you remove, the more tender the cuttlefish will be. You don't have to remove it, but it does help. There we go, nice and clean. Just gonna remove this top section right there. That can be a little bit tough as well. And you'll see we've got a nice clean cuddle ready to eat. Now what we're gonna do is put some small slits. So if we do have that membrane there, that will help in the aid of breaking through that. And it'll be a lot better to eat. Cut it into portion sizes. Give it a wash. It's good to be coated and eaten. Now with the head itself, some people will remove the eyeballs and eat the whole head with the tentacles. I prefer just to cut in front of the eyeballs like so. And you can eat that, absolutely beautiful. Coat them, fry them up, absolutely delicious. Use the remaining part for bait, whatever it might be. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Until next time, tight lines.